Hey, What's happening, everybody? What's up? We're cozy in here today, huh? We got public subs, though. All is right with the world. So uh, thanks, thanks so much for having me. It's great to be with you guys. I love doing these. Um, usually it's a much larger setting, and my message is going out to, I'm like, is it sinking in with all these people here? But a smaller, more intimate environment, it seems to, the, the learning seems to escalate. So I'm, I'm stoked to be with you guys. I got five points I want to talk to you about today. Uh, before I do that, I'll give you a, an idea um, of, of who I am. I, I don't see anybody that I, I do know in the room here. Um, I started uh, Social Buzz TV about six years ago. From nothing, the market crashed in 2008. Anybody in this room remember that? Yeah, thanks for the reminder, huh? Uh, and uh, 2008, I, I realized that I needed to establish myself with a brand that's going to be sustainable and long-term, where people are going to invest into me, but there's also going to be a tremendous amount of value that can be brought to the table. And I thought, wow, people have absolutely no idea what's going on with social media. I think there's a need in the marketplace. Why don't I start educating people about social media? So um, I began doing that in 2010. And um, I was taking a bus and then I skateboard around town to networking events and one day I put a bow tie on and then I figured out doing networking events and then I would say, hey, maybe you can come to my uh, uh, workshop or boot camp after the networking event. So I had this flow that, that, that I created really out of default that started to happen uh, based on my hustle and just my un, un, unwilling uh, and to, to to not get back uh, in the game uh, in one form or fashion. I was going to do that through social media. I've been in this space since 2004. Um, I, I started getting serious about monetizing social media in uh, 2010 when I launched Social Buzz TV. So I had no idea what I was going to do, how I was going to do it. Sebastian, what's the revenue model for Social Buzz TV? And I said, I have absolutely no idea. But I know one thing. If you make enough noise, someone will come knock on your door. Someone will, and I and I speak in confidence. And the reason that I that I that I share that story with you is that, as a realtor, you are the brand. As a realtor, you are the one point in contact where people are making the single biggest buying decision they will ever make in their entire life, for the most part. And they have to know, like, trust, warm and fuzzies, recommendations, reviews, videos, content, blogs, everything to be able to justify hiring you as the as a realtor. Because there's what thirty four thousand realtors in Miami Dade County. Forty one thousand. Forty one thousand. I always get that number off. Forty five now. If we can just round it up and I can just call it a cool forty thousand, that's a lot of noise. To rise above so we're gonna talk about that um, for a few minutes here we got a lot to cover I've got five five points to cover so I just want to give you an idea um, of, of the true grit of the entrepreneur hustle of building something from nothing the real estate industry you build something from nothing you get your license and then what you've got to do something you have to build something why in the world would I let you list my home when you just got your license but man, you had that video strategy or that blog post that I read that really, that you took your past business expertise and implemented into your, your real estate brand. And it really started to spark my interest. And I started to do some more due diligence. I thought, you know what? This individual really has their act together when it comes to real estate knowledge base. It looks like, they, it looks like they've been in the game for 15 or 20 years. So that's the cool thing about real estate is if you are knowledgeable right off the bat, and most people are because you have to take the test and you have to get, you have to educate yourself in that form or fashion, you can really leverage that uh, into the content that you're creating for your brand. So, uh, laptop locks when you don't want it to. Here we go. But I have my clicker, I'm a trusty clicker, so we're going to have to run back up there. Okay, so uh, here's my contact information. I'll give you guys my card before I leave. Uh, I'm a digital storyteller. I'm also a, uh, a strategist and, uh, and a host. I do a lot of hosting for large events, um, MC work, um, and I also speak professionally um, about the subject of social media. I wrote a book three years ago called Social Media Sucks If You Don't Know What You're Doing, and it just tells a story that I briefly told you guys in a couple minutes on how I moved back to Miami in 2008 with nothing but a duffel bag and my daughter and um, <clears throat> built a brand, and here we are six years later, and I'm just getting started. So uh, don't give up. <laughs> Keep swinging. It's a, it's a tough road, and if it wasn't tough, everybody would be doing it. But um, there's my links. You can uh, shoot me an email. I'll give you my, my contact information before we leave. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter, etc. cetera. Um, Ten years ago, if you said you were following me, I would call the police. Okay, cool. So the, the first thing, we're going to go over five things that I think you need to be doing as a realtor to really stand out. Now I'm gonna break down these instead of just, hey, post local events, great, that, that's pretty general. I'm gonna dive into some ideas on what you could potentially do in order to um, target each of these five points that I'm giving you. The first one is to post about local events that are happening in your area, okay? 
let's back up for a second. There's a lot of, not only realtors in Miami-Dade County, there's a lot of noise pertaining to these realtors and it's very redundant and it's very, um, Redundant, I believe, is is the, is, the, is, the, is the, it's good quality drone videos and pictures, and it's look at my listing, buy my stuff, look at my listing, look at me, look at my listing, buy my, and no one's listening to that noise, but it's really loud. Is the crazy part about it? So I feel, I mean, the other day I saw somebody, and I'll never understand this. They they put their they put their listings on 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 LinkedIn. What? Well, it's you know, million people there. Somebody's bound to buy a house not on LinkedIn. The currency of people on LinkedIn is networking, business to business, right. not I wanna buy a house. And chances are, when somebody's ready to make a buying decision on the single biggest financial transaction that they'll make in their life, i.e. buying a home, they're probably gonna ask friends, family, or people that they know, do you have a good realtor, right? Mm -hmm. That's always the first recommendation on where it's at. Referrals, but show of hands, any referral any referral business come in for anybody in the room? Absolutely, It is. it can be the core of your lead gen business uh, as far as how you're generating your business about what people are saying about you. Posting about local events. There's an event happening every single day of the week. Trust me, because I've been to most of them uh, here in Miami-Dade County. Be a resource for your community as a realtor. This is what posting about local events allows you to do. It allows you to promote your local area, but it also shows that you're knowledgeable in what you're doing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, there, there's more that we can dive into with this, but talking about the area where your listings are at and the gems that are in the area that people may or may not know about are that, that's, that's value is what that is. That, that provides, um, people the opportunity to go, wow, maybe this individual isn't all about just selling their home. And when people find out that you're not just about selling or listing their home, but you're about a genuine interest in what they, what, what their immediate need is, it kind of disarms them a little bit. It's like, it'd be, wow, this person genuinely cares. And we know it's hard to explain and put to words what that feeling is of people genuinely caring and giving a rip what you have to say. But Miami is a very fast paced environment. We're in a, mul we're in a, a melting pot of, of diversity down here. So everyone operates and moves at different speeds. Um, but I believe that the people that are, that are taking the time outside and going that extra mile are the ones that are ultimately seeing uh, the better success with the follow-up. Social media has always been around. These tools just surfaced about 10 or 11 years ago. Social media has been postcards and, I don't know, telephone calls. Imagine that, someone picking up the phone. I say, if you want to sell, if you want to sell homes, just return voicemails. And no one does that these days. People look at me like I'm crazy. Uh, talk about um, the people that you sell the home to. And I don't, most people send a bottle of wine or give a gift certificate or do something that pertains to this, but I don't think enough of it's being done because I don't see it happening. Every now and then it's a handshake in the final office. They just got their keys. It's a really cheesy picture. I mean, why not Facebook live a few minutes with actual brand new homeowners in your office at the closing table when they're at the, when the, when the endorphins are at their highest, get them talking about their experience with you as a realtor, a Facebook live, because guess what? We're Facebook Live right here, why? So you can take this today, you're not gonna digest, no one can write as fast as I can talk, and you're not gonna digest everything I'm gonna say, that's the goal of it, it's the fire hose approach to give you so much, but it's enough, you can go back and replay this. This also can get turned into a blog post, it can also get archived. You see the, 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 the multiple uses of your content. You Facebook Live it, you also put it on your YouTube channel, you run an ad on Facebook, you put it into a blog post, include it into your newsletter, and you've just shot that one time. Does that make sense for the content that's there? You gotta be careful with Facebook Live, and we're gonna talk about this because it's so brand new and people are misusing and abusing and it's really crazy. Has anyone been annoyed by any anybody Facebook Living mm -hmm. at all? I mean, I'm taking my cat out, I'm going out here, check this out, here we go, we're Facebook Live, I'm at a red light, I'm in traffic. Did you see that it's raining? Cows go moo, the sun came <laughs> up today. I mean, people are really using some illegitimate, re illegitimate reasons, in my opinion, to be able to use this. The goal of Facebook Live is to give people a peek behind the curtain because that's what we all want. It's great for celebrities, Celebrities, right? We can follow all of our favorite celebrities and, and people that um, that we've been following for years and now get a, a look into their daily lives. Facebook Live allows you to do that. We're gonna dive into some ideas on what you can do for your listings in just a couple minutes. But congratulate homeowners, but really do something creative. So talk about it publicly, then what happens when you talk about people and you do something publicly? Then they talk about being talked about, right? People love that. And then from there, they go and share it. Oh, wow, we were thinking about buying a house too. Do you mind making an introduction to your realtor? It's simple little tiny things like that that, that really come to fruition and really happen. Any bloggers in the room? Does anybody blog about what you do? Okay. So, so I would strongly suggest 
that you do this. There's a couple of reasons why you want to create content as a realtor, because you can blog about events happening in your local town. You can, you can blog about um, that, that, that little gem of an Italian restaurant that nobody really knows about that's tucked away in a shopping center that if people only knew, they'd be excited. It's the best kept secret. Write about that. Shoot a quick clip. Go in there for happy hour and Facebook Live and talk to the bartender. Ask about the menu real quick. You're the realtor. You're the expert. These people are looking to you to know everything about the area because location, location, location. So why not take what's already in the location and start talking about it? So festivals, farmers markets, uh, concerts, uh, movies under the stars, uh, local gem restaurants. Start talking and creating content around these things and blogging about them. But you can also shoot video. Everyone has smartphones in the room, right? Mm -hmm. These smartphones shoot impeccable. I should, we shoot all of our social buzz TV content and show content on smartphones. We shoot and edit everything on smartphones. We haven't hired a film crew and I can't tell you when because it shoots extremely high quality, HD quality stuff where we can shoot on location, edit on location, post on location, and advertise that post while on location before we even leave shooting the show. It mind boggles me why people haven't wrapped their head around this yet, but everyone possesses the same ability to do it. Download the iMovie app, Apple users, Android users, can't help you. Um, Apple users, I, 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 I'm not familiar with that world and I haven't found a video editing software, nor would I want to be on the hook on saying it's awesome. But I know that their the iMovie is tried and true, works great, and uh, on your smartphone and you're just dragging and dropping and putting music and putting the little, you'd be surprised the video that you can edit and, and on your own by just kind of tooling around with it. So start a blog, start talking about things that interest you uh, pertaining to the area of where it's at. Of course you can use live video for open houses and things of that nature, but create a blog to talk, to be the go-to source for what you do. Because if you read a blog about Miami lakes and the best spots to eat Miami lakes and you're a realtor, the first thing I think of is, wow, this person really wants to educate me on what's going on in this neighborhood, where I'm going to be. They don't want to just sell me a house and not answer my phone calls. Um, but like it says here, if you're having trouble finding things to post, why not start a blog? So you're like, what do I talk about? Create your own content, and then later on you can you can you can reuse that content uh, and share it as a post as your, as part of your content calendar. Uh, post your listings creatively. Okay, this is more than just having a really good drone guy and a really good photographer or even a videographer that's going to go through and do 360 pictures and make everything look warm and fuzzy for you. That's boring, and the last thing people want to see is an MLS listing with a link. I'm like, what is that? There has to be some. There used to be some plugin or some app called uh, Candy, something Candy. I don't know if it's around anymore, but there used to be a plugin right from the MLS that you could go. They could click on one of your tabs on your Facebook page. I forget what the name of it is. I want to say candy with a K or something. I don't know if it still exists, but it allows you to, to pull in your MLL, MLS listings through a tab so it looks good because it's within the format there, but just copying and pasting a link on there. If you're going to do that, at least take a, a few pictures from the listing, post them as pictures with a link in there. You're going to get a little bit more traction on your personal page. On your Facebook business page, posting it there and not uh, activating any ads whatsoever, you're just wasting your time. No one's seeing it at all. And that's been the model for those of you that didn't know. Facebook first launched business pages, post content, engagements 50 to 60%. Wow, this is great, excellent. The first movers advantage that really got on and started using Facebook business pages were able to capitalize on that. Facebook saw that saw that continue to grow. They wanted to grow their ad base, their ad their ad agency base out. So they started to scale that back. It went from 50 to 60 percent um, exposure down to less than six percent. Um, and they said, but if you do want it, the same type of exposure, you can do that. And we've got some affordable advertising options for you. And that starts with the boosting posts and running Facebook ads, which is very simple to do and allows you to make sure that the content that you're creating and pushing out is getting in front of the right audience. So um, just know that that's key. And it doesn't, to give you an idea, um, our, my show Foodie Buzz, where I, I review restaurants, we spend between 15 and $20 a week. And we, and we get between, uh, I would say between two and 4,000 video views, um, anywhere from 10 to 30 people sharing it. Um, and the reach is between six and 12,000 people. And those are US based people, foodie people, 15 or 20 bucks, and I'm targeting people. And again, this is all, our show's in beta right now, so we're doing proof of concept, so I'm not gonna dump a bunch of dough into it, but I don't need to. I know that if I spend 15 or 20 bucks and I get that type of traction, I know what 100 bucks will do for me. So the same applies with, with, your, with your listings. You've gotta be creative with the listing. If I was a realtor, I always try to put my, 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 myself in those shoes, I would be creating some sort of 
video, lead-in video that was a quick, you ever see the video ads that are taking place? Introducing myself and, and, and talking about the property in some creative way, and then from there, leading them into my website where the listings are, or to my blog where I wrote a blog post about my newest listing because we have 360. Now, those pictures, the 360 pictures, and the drones, and all that cool technology is fantastic. So leverage all the stuff that you're already doing and implement it into your social strategy. Put it into your blog post. Take some of the videos and see if your, your drone guy will let you take the video and put it on your YouTube channel or put it on your Facebook channel and be able to run ads from there. So I'm, we're gonna we're gonna chat more about um, live video right now, and uh, come on in. Thank you. Hello. Hi. We're gonna hang people from the ceiling here in a few minutes. Here, here we go. We got some seats upstairs. Packed house here. Sorry. It's all good. Wave to the camera. All right, cool. So let's chat more about Facebook Live. Has anybody done any live video whatsoever at all? Uh, not personally, but other people have done it. I know mine yeah. did it. It's very okay. effective. Okay, so there's two main platforms, actually three now, because you can live stream on YouTube. So um, the first one is Facebook Live. Obviously, you just go to your go to your status page, click Live, put a subject in, click Go Live, and that's it. And it'll ask you if you want to save it. It'll save it in HD. Uh, you can share it later. You can run an ad on it. You can't run an ad on it if it's your personal personal page, but you can run an ad on it if you share the video from someone's personal page and put it on your business page, then you can run an ad from there. But I couldn't go to this video on my personal page run an ad. I can share it with Social Buzz TV, then go run an ad on it if I wanted to. And that's what I plan to be able to do. I'll go and put this out here because social media and real estate seem to be a pretty popular subject. So the odds of someone seeing and going, hey, I saw your video, can you come do that in my office, are pretty consistent. So um, that, that's the idea of being able to leverage it. Plus, you guys can go back and watch this to your blue in the face in case you missed something. Or if you have questions about it or, or what have you, um, Periscope is is Twitter's live streaming platform. So same same process. You pull up Twitter. Any Twitter users in the room? Okay, real quick. People are having conversations on Twitter 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, seven days a week. It's never going to stop. It's a fire hose of ongoing, perpetual information that will never, ever stop, right? That's a conversation that's taking place. I can guarantee you somewhere within that conversation, someone is saying, I think we're ready to buy a house. I think we're finally ready to get out of this neighborhood and sell the house. Um, we're relocating to... What's it called? Do you know a good relocation specialist as far as a realtor is concerned? These conversations are taking place, and if you are not listening to these conversations, I'm not talking about all of them, but there's ways to be able to be notified if these conversations are taking place. We like to refer to it as social listening, and that's being able to hear what conversations are already taking place online in order to be able to respond back to that conversation. And that may not be, hey, uh, that person says I'm looking to sell my house, you don't respond back and go, I'm a realtor, I can help. It may just be hello. It starts with a simple hello and, and, a, and a conversation. But same same applies with Facebook. Same applies Google Alerts. You go to google.com forward slash alerts. You can set up specific keywords. I would highly recommend setting up your first and last name. I would highly recommend setting up your company business name. These are all alerts that anytime someone mentions your name, first name, last name, um, anything of that nature online, you get a you get emailed. You can even get a text message. Um, there's there's certain specific. I couldn't give you an exact website right now, I think it's Tweet Alerts, if they're still around, um, that allows you to be notified when people are having these conversations on Facebook and on Twitter. So you're getting notifications, you, get t you can get text messages, you can get emails, etc., of people actually having these conversations, so you're not constantly on a computer all day listening for these conversations. Um, everyone getting this so far? Any questions so far? No? Is anybody doing any of the five things that I mentioned right now, actively? Yeah, Facebook. Okay. Facebook, the Instagram. Sure. I have the story on Instagram. I, 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 do, I do that. I'm glad you brought Instagram up. Let's talk about that for a minute. So, um, people are completely certifiedly out of control with the with the hashtags. Okay. Um, two, just two, I just two words. I can sum everything up with the advice. Are you guys ready? Stop it. Okay. You know why? You know why? Because no one has ever gone. You know what? Let's click on Insta houses and see what's there. No one ever. Just stop immediately. So that's just an insider tip right there. When you see people doing it, friends help me. You know, friends don't let friends over post. A couple of hashtags here and there, okay, no problem. I wrote my book, Social Media Sucks, was the hashtag for everything. Why I'm branding my book. It's a good idea to be able to talk about that consistently. It's okay to have a hashtag. In fact, let's talk about that for a second. I highly recommend that you have, that you find yourself a hashtag that is creative, that <laughs> pertains to your brand. 
that you can constantly use. Mm -hmm. I mean, the hashtags that have been created that take place these days blow my mind. Some are really comical. Some of you kind of scratch your head at, but I have a 15-year-old, so I know all about, you know, hashtag lit. Lit, Dad. Everything's lit, you know? So uh, everything's lit, Dad. Um, come up with something creative pertaining to a hashtag so that you guys can understand. Let me go back. There we go. There we go. It makes me nervous to not know I'm all the way. The slides just mess me up. There's always a technical error. I'm like, am I done with the deck yet? Here, I'm better just, just roll. So we're just going to stick with this one. We're going to my contact info um, um, if, if you guys need it in the end. Hashtags give you the ability to brand yourself, right? So does anybody know what a hashtag is? Back in the day, we called it a pound sign, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that how you made a beep go through a page, right? 911 beep. Um, the goal of hashtags is to organize information and organize conversations as well. So Twitter rolled it out, a guy rolled it out, uh, some, some Twitter user said, oh, I'm just gonna use the hashtag, no one's using this, see if I can start my own language in an effort to categorize information. Twitter caught on, got the technology, nobody really owns a hashtag. You own a hashtag based on your horsepower behind the hashtag, does that make sense? So hashtag uh, life is good, right? Probably pretty common hashtag, motivational Monday. There's a lot of different hashtags on there. If you had enough horsepower to take over that, it could be your hashtag. That's why I say create something that's your own. And always search for it and see if it's available or not. Um, everybody um, recognizes hashtags now. When I say everybody, I mean the social media platforms. So Facebook, Twitter, Google+, which is Google Local, and uh, and LinkedIn. They all recognize, LinkedIn was like as of a couple of weeks ago, now recognize hashtags. So come up with something creative. How can you... And I put a bow tie on one day, but now I can't leave the house without one. It's like, where's the bow tie? Where's the bow tie? Like, I, I usually put it in my pocket if it's... Like, right now, I'm sweltering in here. I just want to rip this thing off and throw it across the room. But people associate my brother. Like, where's your bow tie? You're not in your... You're out of uniform. And it gets a little perturbed. I get a little perturbed in me. I'm like, bow I'm going to tie this guy up with my bow No, but um, um, I'm not going to do that Facebook Live disclosure. Um... But people associate me with that now, and I'm, I'm, I feel extremely blessed that people say, where's the bow tie, where's the bow tie, although it's, I hear it consistently, where's the bow tie, where I started to wear it just not tied, I'll bring with me in my pocket, I'll rock one of the, you know, tuxedo t-shirts, and at least I got, but people identify, the, the bow tie is not my brand, but people associate a bow tie with the brand, and the goal is, when people think social media, and they think bow ties, they automatically think of me, and that's how I got here today. I had a friend of a friend who was a realtor, called me and said, I know somebody that hosts social media trainings, maybe you could help out, made an introduction, and because, and I talked to her this morning, and I said, Bethany, when you think of bow ties in social media, who do you think about? She goes, well, I think about you, and I go, well, I went, no, I'm on the phone with you right now, so she goes, no, I legitimately do, and I hear that consistently, and the reason that I tell you that is that I have been consistently wearing bow ties and talking about social media day in and day out, every single day consistently for the past six years as I've built this brand. And now people, and now, and then, so instead of, hey, I'm over here, it's more of knock, knock, the phone rings and things now come to me. Thankfully, I don't have to work as hard as I used to, but hard work pays off, side note there. Mm -hmm. um, but hashtags are very important pertaining to your branding. Um, let's talk about branding for a second. So I was creating an, a course a few years back to train people about social media, and I was gonna be the social media professor. This was this genius two I, idea I had at two o'clock in the morning. So I thought, well, professors wear bow ties, don't they? Yeah, just go with it, right? They were bow ties. So I put on a bow tie. It wasn't even tied correctly. Learned to tie it on YouTube, in case you're wondering how to tie bow ties. YouTube. Put on the bow tie, and um, I thought, you know what? I can go out in public like this. I can. I think people will take me seriously, and I think that people will not forget about the guy in the bow tie. And uh, shortly after, my, my friend Scott Monty, who wears bow ties too, said, hey, Sebastian, bow ties never go out of style because bow ties were never in style. So, uh, I, and I, I, like, I, like to, I like to agree with that. I've got about 35 bow ties now. People send them to me as gifts and thank you gifts. And hey, Sebastian, did you get my bow tie? And it's just grown in. My mom got me this really cool rack for Christmas. I'm like, where did you find this like made for bow ties? Really, really cool thing. And it's an antique, <laughs> oddly enough. So the bow tie stuff has, has really, um, has, has really I, I can't get away from it. I, even if I tried, I go out, I wear polos. People are like, seriously, what's up? I've had a client throw me out of his office because I walked in without a bow tie. So I learned my lesson. Yeah, he's like, really? Come on. He's, like, he's a personal injury attorney. Can, can you vibe with that? So, so he was kind of like, he's like, are you serious? You talk this whole bow tie game, this whole social media, the whole bow tie. You're, you got a bow tie in front of your book. And you're, Listen, you might want to leave my office and come back with a bow tie. So after that, I thought, you know what? We're, we're, we're wearing the bow tie here. You need to stand out 
from all the noise that's taking place. Do you understand? Everyone says, buy my house. Everyone says, take a look at my listing. Take a look at my rental. I'm involved with investors, and we work directly with investors, and they use all these investors and, and new construction and brickle and all these buzzwords uh, to be able to um, get people excited, but they're not getting excited because it's redundant information. Does that make sense? What would you say the biggest hurdle of your social media strategy is right now, other than time? Because <laughs> time's number one. It's people taking it seriously and actually thinking that you have a benefit for them because you're just like any other realtor. They just kind of scroll right past you. People taking you seriously. So what, what do you think that benefit is that they're looking for? Just, uh, I guess, for you to listen to them and if they have any real estate concerns. Right. So that's... so. You, you just, I mean... I'll post something about real estate or something, and it's like, I have a feeling most people just kind of scroll right past it because they get so much of it. Right. And so, um, I guess catering to them, more to their needs. Right. So if you maybe do like a Facebook Live where it's, hey, ask the realtor, and just had some maybe. conversations, and then you closed out that Facebook Live session with, by the way, I just wanted you guys to see, because we talked about some examples of my new listings and the technology I have. I just wanted to share the link of that most recent, just show you some examples of that listing. And you're by default showing the listing, do you understand? It's not what you say, it's how you say it. Right. So coming up with a creative way to have it a, a way in, you have to earn that trust. Right? You have to earn the, the ability for people to say, you know what, I like this person, I trust this person, I want to do business with this person, I want to trust this person. Because in the real estate transaction world, I mean, there is some, there is some, like, some nightmares that go down, and no one wants to deal with that. That's a, it's a very, and I think that's people's biggest fear. What if? You know, what if this is, you know, this realtor doesn't answer my call? I went through a horrible uh, experience in California, but that was during the boom, and no realtors answered their phone or they cared. They, I, he would refer me to his minions, right? He had a beeper. In 2005, he had a beeper, right? So he would refer me to, he's like number one rat at school and everything. I understand you've been selling real estate since before I was born. I, I got it. But at the same time, it's a half a million dollar transaction. You still can return phone calls. And it wasn't. It was to his minions. I mean, I almost pulled the deal because they would just refer me back. And when I say minions, I mean like borderline interns. Like, just got out of school. We can barely spell real estate type deal. And it was a horrible experience. And if I had to do it all over again, I would have never done it with him, ever. I would have screened out and hung. You know what my realtor's going to be? My realtor's going to be my my, my, like my homeboy, my homegirl, right? I'm going to know this person. You're coming over for dinner. You're going to meet my family. You're going to know everybody. You're going to know what's going on because I'm making a big transaction with you, and I'm, I'm a little high maintenance, and most people are. Most customers are, don't tell you that they're high maintenance, but they all are, right? They all are. But if you can diffuse them a little bit by by providing that value and giving them that, that warm and fuzzy. What else? What's another hurdle? There's got to be big hurdles because no one in here is on Twitter. So there's, there's other hurdles. Well, let's, let's, let's dig into this here well, so we can make... Well, that's a hurdle in itself. It's, it's like, how do you get to... Because I see Twitter. I, I, I tried it, and I, and, I, and, I, and I got on it, but I didn't see as, the response. I don't know. I just couldn't engage people as well as I do on Facebook or Instagram. Um, so that's one thing is with Twitter. It's like, like I don't know. Like you I said, there's know. all these conversations you're saying, and it's like, how do you engage with people? So I, I, I Twitter, I stopped using it, like, maybe a while ago, like a year ago, because... I don't know, it was just tough to engage anybody in there. Like, I don't know, it's just, it's a little different. It's just, I don't see, I follow local people and local, and I don't have, you know, I don't see the conversations happening like you were saying. I'm sure they're there. I'm sure it's it's a fact, but that in itself, how to, you know, how to engage with people on Twitter. Um, you know, and at the same time, you know, I, I don't know if it's such a good, is it, is it really a good idea to be on everything? Is you, do you need to be on Instagram, Snapchat? No, you don't Instagram need to be on everything, but you need to meet people you, where they're at. Exactly. You got to find out where your audience is at and meet them where it's at and find out okay. where, where, what your competition is not doing. I guarantee you, your competition is not capitalizing on Snapchat or Instagram stories. No one's doing it. It's too new. It's just another platform. People are barely sending tweets out. Why would they start another platform that's mainly geared towards tweens and millennials, which it is, but it's growing rapidly, rapidly. I mean, their valuation isn't, isn't as ridiculous as it is for no reason. I mean, they are an extremely valuable platform. And it's going to be Snapchat through 2018. So get on board. Because the more you resist it, the more it's going to be, and the more, the more persistent it is, as with anything else in life. These things are way too much horsepower. Do you understand? We, 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 we make a turn, and then we turn the corner, and you either make the turn or you're right up the cliff. And we all make the turn. We made the turn with fax machines. We made the turn with cell phones. We made the turn with beepers. We made the turn. I'm not getting a cell phone. Now most of us, you know, that's all that we have. Technology drives our decisions. And we will always, always trade convenience for privacy. 
Here's my social. Just let me in. Click terms and conditions. When's the last time you read terms and conditions? Really? <laughs> Click. Five. Every time you log into something through Facebook, that gives Facebook that gives the person you're logging into your contact information. You can do that through Facebook ads. Did you know that? People respond to one of your Facebook ads. You have their name, email address, and uh, and phone number because they they fill in that information. Facebook gives it to you because that's part of the whole open graph that they have. That that's the idea. You can log in through Facebook and actually grab that information. So not only are you running ads, you can also upload your email database to Facebook and run ads to those people who aren't already connected to you. They're like, how did this person even know I was here? So Facebook is way smarter than us, if you guys haven't picked up on that at all. Uh, but you can upload your email database, like Constant Contact, into the ads panel. It's called Facebook Dark Ads. And that allows you to create an ad and run it to that specific list on Facebook. People are like, I didn't know Golden Acre was on Facebook. They are now. Yeah, I think, and then the whole, um, you were mentioning about boosting the post, how you you, you guys reach out to, what is it you said, 6,000, 10,000? Right. Yeah, about six and 10,000 people. For I mean, with... Fifteen twenty dollars. I mean, the power of, of Facebook ads is huge. Yeah, it really is. So I would reaching I would, out to that many people for that little amount. Yeah. It, 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 that, that, that's my point. I mean, I don't think the realtors are really leveraging other than we spent a bunch of money on a drone video. Let's dump some cash into boosting the posts to see what happens in there. But I don't think there's enough. There's not enough objection uh, or, or, or objective rather behind that. Why are we boosting the post or the video that we had here? Who exactly are we looking to target? So I'll give you a great example. I've got a client that sells artificial turf. It's a luxury product. Sells to mainly Coconut Grove, Coral Gables, Key Biscayne, Miami Beach, right? <clears throat> we go out. We create content for what they're doing. I got a green bow tie on we're talking about the turf really cool backyards the whole program we create content about the actual jobs we're doing we'll do a before we'll do an after and then we'll go run ads on these videos in coconut grove the gables key biscayne and miami beach so when people see the content and then god forbid i show up at an appointment and we've done that too we ran ads and then i show up knocking on the door with a monster grass hat on and people are like wait a second you've got a video and they love it right they're like wait a second and they don't understand it's just a simple process that we're doing by showcasing a product and I happen to just be the talking head for where it's at. You can do the same thing with what you're doing pertaining to your listings. But as soon as that listing's there, I would just be everything about that listing. I would be, how can I blog about it? How can I Facebook Live about it? How can I uh, post a picture on Instagram about it? How can I talk about it through video? And how can I talk about it through my normal conversations that I have? Five ways of each property that you have. And then once you have those five things, then let's do the same thing about the neighborhood. Let's do the same thing about Miami. Let's do the same thing about trending things that take place. I mean, you can constantly just extract that content right out of content. Yeah. Exactly, 100% value. You telling someone the, the gems of the neighborhood and the mm -hmm. and the upcoming events and things that take place. How many people I give my card to and they don't know who I am? They never even met me. But they go, I'm on your email list. I get your newsletters. Like, email works because I provide people information that has nothing to do with social media. I don't. I very rarely send an email out to say, would you like to hire an agency to help you out with social media? Very rarely. But I'll send an episode of Foodie Buzz out because you'd love to know about a new joint that opened up in Coconut Grove that has awesome, uh, you know, I don't know, Oysters Rockefeller. That just came to my mind. Mm. <laughs> do you think it's better doing it through your business Facebook page or your personal Facebook page? Well, we were talking a little bit about this before we got started this morning. So Facebook Live is really new, right? So unless you have a highly engaged Facebook page where you're posting content and people are highly engaged, usually news news outlets are the most highly engaged brands. They're working towards it, but you have to pay to play to be able to get there. So in order to jumpstart things, a great example where Facebook Live right here, but I'm doing it for my personal page, right? I'll go and share this with Social Buzz TV and I can run an ad on it later, right? You guys could take it and share it with your personal business page on here. But I would start with your personal page to build the foundation out. Mm -hmm. And as you got that, people look forward to the actual live stream. And don't make it long and drawn out. This will end up being close to an hour. And whoever fell off, fell off. But a majority of the people that are watching this are um, will be watching it later on, more than likely. But it will let you know. And you can pull it. tells you how many views were on there. And you can see the engagement that's there. You know whether or not it's good content or not good content. You want people that are viewing it live and you want people talking and asking questions. Ideally, you should be right there in front of the computer as you're Facebook living or have a, an associate there that's actually answering questions because a QA and a is the best way to be able to do it. Or, you know, topics about real estate that are very, very important. Or did you know when you bought a condo, you had to do this or X, Y, Z. I'm working with, uh, working with a lot of attorneys. So we cover, of course, law logistics all the time. Um, ones that we did a shoot with a real estate attorney earlier this week and it was do I need to hire an attorney for uh, a real estate transaction the answer is no but you know the process is a heck of a lot smoother and more professional if you have an attorney on board with it um, hiring the right 
realtor or real estate professional is absolutely vital. It's not just somebody with a license, it's somebody that can actually get the job done on here. Um, and then the last one was, um, again, I'm trying to just paint a picture of some ideas of content that we're creating on behalf. Um, another one is a construction uh, lawyer that we work with. Uh, her emphasis wants to be on you know uh, people that have bought in new construction and track homes, like what's going down in, in Homestead, et cetera, and the, and, the, and the mess that people get into and buy. Imagine buying a house and two years later, a brand new house and two years later, it falls apart. Um, so being able to go and target, hey, did you know when you buy a condo, did you know when you buy in these track homes and Homestead? So this is the content we're gonna start to create because it's very popular. Um, my buddy Mitch Jackson, the trial attorney in Southern California, he um, likes to take uh, uh, news that happens on a daily basis um, and then create video and content and live stream on that topic, the legal side of things. So he's not giving legal advice, but he's saying, hey, based on, uh, you know, if, if Google does buy Twitter, this is what they're looking at, or any logistics, any safety concerns that come up with live streaming, et cetera, um, drones, the FTC, you got to get the whole, uh, you know, uh, uh, aviation certification, the whole nine. So he extracts, and he's a trial attorney, but he's able to get a lot of business based on the value that he provides talking about current events. So pull up something that's happening in Miami right now um, and, uh, and, and talk about it. Go Facebook Live about it. Maybe you're at an, at an event that's taking place or the South Beach Food and Wine Festival uh, comes once a year and you're actually there and talking about your favorite restaurant that was there. Again, talking about some, talking about anything but real estate. I don't know if that like, you know what I mean? It's a little, they're like, wait a second, Sebastian. I am a realtor. I understand that, but I would say 80-20. 80% you're providing value talking about really cool stuff that piqued people's interest and the other 20% is, hey, by the way, got some really cool listings that you may or may not be interested in. Again, we're living in a, we're living in a, in a, in a, in a, in a pull world, push and pull, right? So push was, hey, buy my stuff, come to my event, look at my listings, push, push, push. That was great in the 80s, right? The Mad Men days, advertising, that was the goal, spend millions of dollars and put our message in front of people in Times Square and they're going to see it and they're going to go buy a Coke. Right, those are the old days, right? That may still happen these days, but chances are they're going to go buy a Coke when an app pops up or something pops up on their phone and, and tells them to go do do it. Um, I like to tell the story of, of like four years ago, it was Cash for Reality Show, so I had to go to New York for the day, I meet with the show executives, but the meeting was like 15 seconds, literally. They're like, okay, cool, we'll see you in Hollywood, and I was in. Like, That's it. So I had the whole day, so I wandered over to to Times Square. Um, and I, I see, I'm looking around, we're in the advertising mecca of the world, and everyone's looking down at their phones, everyone. People are spending billions of dollars to be exposed. And I, the light went off, and I thought, wow, we are in the midst of an incredible shift in the way we communicate. We no longer have to look for news and information that comes directly to us. And it's your job as a brand, brands, and I say that as realtors, to be able to take an effective message that provides value and get it in front of the right people. And you don't know who those right people are until you catch a rhythm on, hey, these are the majority of the people where the majority of our business comes from. Reviews are another big thing huge thing on Facebook and on Google Plus. Anybody read reviews before they go somewhere? Oh, yeah. Before they call a friend? Before they do anything? Right. Yeah, I know I do. I go to Amazon Prime and I Amazon Prime junkie. Anybody else in my club? Yeah. yeah. So uh, what I do, my filters are, it's got to be Amazon Prime because I can't wait. I cannot wait. I'm not waiting till Saturday. I can have it tomorrow. Some days I can have it this afternoon, right? Um, four-star review and Amazon Prime. I, I could, they customize what we, exactly what we want. So we want to make sure that, and I'm not talking about calling friends and family, but hey, can you do me a solid and give me a review on Google? You want people that you're actually doing business with that can legitimately talk about, even better, a video testimonial and incentivize them. This is right before you give them the bottle of Dom Perignon or you give them the Outback gift card. I'm kidding about the Outback gift card. I'm kidding about the Outback gift card. Um, this is right when you do that. Like, hey, congratulations. Welcome to the world of home ownership. Excellent. Hey, listen, when you, when, when you get into your new home, can, do, do you mind giving me a quick review or something that's great? But that's the time to ask them about that. Sure, absolutely. They're the most excited about it. Of course, though, if you're a great if you're a great agent, they're going to do whatever you need them to do whenever. And again, I, I, I highly recommend establishing a rapport that is beyond any type of rapport that you've built with anybody when you're selling these houses. Become friends with these people. Talk to these people. Spend time with these people. Again, this is a large, huge, and then you're able to, who knows what you're going to extract out of that. When you get customers shooting video testimonials for you, or doing a Facebook Live of someone in their brand new living room that you just sold their house to, and they're, they're on Facebook Live talking about their experience because they are so amped up about the service that you delivered to them, it happens. It really does. People get so absolutely ecstatic about the experience. All they want to do is talk about you. That's with anything, really. What other challenges? What are we doing on time? We're good. What other challenges? I've got a question about blogging. What's a good platform to use? WordPress. WordPress, okay. yeah. If you have a website, it should be 
I mean, I know a lot of agents use the broker's website, and I got that. I would start my own website, Sebastian the Realtor. And on that website would be a blog with content, etc. And Sebastian the Realtor, that's all this guy talks about is bow ties, Miami, what's going on in Miami. It's really cool real, real estate. Right. That's what Sebastian the Realtor does. Yeah. And that would be the consistent. Again, I'm using this example. I don't know Bob the Realtor, Mary the Realtor. I have no idea. But all I know is if I work for Caldwell Banker, Caldwell Banker has the gazillion dollars. I'm just getting started. I need to get my piece of the pie. So yes, I am an agent with Caldwell Banker, but I also have my own brand as Sebastian the Realtor that hangs my license with Caldwell. You're allowed to do that, right? Of course you are. Yeah. So, and I use the example, um, my friend Gavin was a flight attendant for years and um, he got let go from American Airlines because he has this parody called, um, I don't know, but they, they ended up doing a parody of the of the CEO of American Airlines who makes all kinds of stupid decisions. And they called her the tinfoil lady. That's what it was. But he went full on. I mean, I'm talking wig, makeup, the whole nine. Ended up getting fired the whole nine, but through the whole process, it didn't really matter because he actually built a brand around being a flight attendant. And the, imagine how big that world is. He's now got a show online. He travels everywhere. All he talks about is flight attendants and flight attendant challenges. And if any <laughs> businesses are not doing what they're supposed to, putting them on blast in a very creative way and it makes corporate America go crazy but um, my point is he found a niche on where it is I don't know what it takes to find a niche in real estate because you have 41,000 of you that's a lot you know I don't I would you know Guns N' Roses would come to a, my, come to a big city in 1985 and they would run a two-night show but they would have challenges you know filling that second night uh, in some cities you know you're in Minneapolis maybe they're not as popular there so they would just have Axl Rose just chuck a television out of the hotel window and it end up on the front page of the paper they'd sell out immediately. I mean, it's a PR strategy. I don't know if you can get away with that in, in, in 2016. My, my, my point is it's real, it's that shock, it's that in your face, it's that holy cow, I have never seen a realtor do this. So I think that's the number one thing that I wanna leave you guys with with a thought, which is, so what can I do as a brand swimming in a pool of 41,000? How can I, with, with social media, how can I rise above that how can I find my bow tie? How can I rise above the noise? And how can I become the go-to source for what I do? How can people remember me for my, and I use bow tie, that's your, that's your prop, that's your, I don't know what it is. It could be hats, it could be scarves, it could be socks, it could be belts, it could be cool pants, it could be the car you drive, it could be a, a number of different things, but there's a lot of things that people go, oh, that's the guy, or that's the gal with the, Right, so find out with your with the what is your the? I'm gonna start dressing like the Monopoly guy. You can do that too. <laughs> you can totally do that That's too. Creative. You can totally do that too. But I again, I think we all grossly underestimate our social equity. Like in people, my buddy Gary Vaynerchuk says that that, that authenticity trumps likability, and I really think that because people can feel your authenticity like immediately, and they know right. That's it. Thank it's kind of like you walk into the house and uh, you're buying the house, and like that's it. This is it. Welcome home. Or you're selling the house and your realtor calls back and go, we got an offer. And you just, that's it. I know the number. You just, when you know, you know. And when you got it, you got it. So you know that you have the knowledge. You got the real estate knowledge already. What you got to master is the branding aspect of it. So how, how, can, I, how can I get that corner? And I promise you, this is the stuff that will keep you up at night. It really, in a good way. It really will. Because you're like, there's more. There's 41,000 of us. I have to stand above the noise somehow. And it doesn't matter about your ad budget. It, doesn't, it has nothing to do with your ad budget. It has to do with your unique ability to stand out as a brand for you, right? The lifetime value of a customer is another thing that's grossly underestimated too, right? These people could buy houses from you forever and send family to you forever, right? I would wanna establish a relationship with these people that's strong, close to a friend's family type of type of relationship. And that that's really how it, how it, the guy that sold me my first, yeah, the guy that sold me my first house was a great, that was a great experience. So I think the buying experience is always good. I think the selling when the market starts to dip, that starts to be a, we, we return every fourth phone call experience. And that's another thing to answer your phone and return voicemails and leave your voicemail every day. I'm gonna challenge everybody in the room to change their voicemail on a daily basis. Hi, this is Sebastian, the realtor. Today is Monday, September 15th. I'll be in and out of the office all day showing incredible property all over Miami, which your call is very important to me. Send me a tweet, find me on Instagram, or leave me a message. I will return your call within 24 hours. Have a great day. People about drop their phone, run their car off the road. No one's doing this stuff anymore. It's very simple. It's, it, it, Tony, any Tony Robbins fans in here? Two, two millimeters. The two millimeter adjustment change your entire view on branding yourself, marketing yourself, and how you actually show up in the marketplace. Every single person wants a badass realtor. Can I say that? A badass realtor. People would go, that she is bad. That dude is on it when it comes to real estate. 
And if you've been to his YouTube channel, videos are hilarious. This guy live streams, he talks to his title reps, he talks to his, uh, to anybody who's involved with the real estate transaction, shows up, Facebook Live, look who's buying lunch today, we got, the guy's hilarious, he's really funny. So if comedy is something that you may or may not possess, you don't know until you do it, right? Comedy's easy when it's expected, so not all of us know if we're funny or not, right? So you have to kind of just dive in. We all think it's stupid, okay? You're gonna look at it and go, this is really dumb, I look dumb on camera. Just so you know, that's the first thought that's gonna ruin everyone's mind. Number one, people's because there's two, 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 uh, two people, two biggest fears. Let's spit our big words out here, Sebastian. Okay, um, number two biggest fear that humans have: public speaking. No, excuse me. Number two, not no, number one, public speaking. Number two, dying. Yeah, people are more scared of public speaking than they are of dying. Same, and the reason I bring that up for public speaking is because of uh, Facebook video. Is his public speaking? recording videos of yourself, any content, putting your, your mug in front of a camera, people ugh, kind of freeze up. Remember one thing, whatever you've come up with, whatever you're there to talk to about, those people are there. If they've tuned into your video, whoever's on there talking, that people could be cussing me out right now, I have no idea. There's the downside of live video. You have some trolls that like to, like to, like to get in there. So you could have, you know, I've been like, no, I'm saying this is great stuff. Okay, good, 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 good. Yeah, I know, but you know, it happens. Like when live streaming first came out, there's like trolls out there. So like, it's like, I have the perfect stream going and like right at the end, someone would hop on and be like, Nice bow tie, ass clown. You know, like at, the, at, the, at, the, at the very last minute, right? So just be just be cognizant. I recommend having a um, have a have a, have, a, have your troll patrol uh, on on there, which was somebody monitoring the comments, so you can focus on the audience. And it's kind of cool to have two people there. It's like, hey, I've got my got my junior realtor sitting right next to me, and as well, we're here at Facebook Live. We're doing a little Q and A over lunch. We'll ask the realtor, you ready to go, Jenny? Yeah, I'm totally ready to go. Excellent. You're focused on who's tuning in and seeing all the all the hearts and everything popping up, et cetera. Um, and then your colleague is there monitoring everything. Hey, we got a question from John in Kendall. John wants to know if he's getting ready to buy multiple units in the same community, does he have to, you know, that type of stuff where you can get that interactive. And then when that video is done, take that video and send it to somebody who can transcribe it. And you can find that through a freelancer on elance.com, freelancer.com. Transcribe that live video, turn it into a blog post, include the video in the blog post. Now you've got two pieces of content. And then you can tweet it out, that's three pieces of content. Four, so you're able to do specific things by one way. So just carve out 15 minutes a day. Can everybody commit to 15 minutes a day to figuring out what you guys wanna talk about? Just on Facebook. Let's just start with Facebook and with Instagram. Because Instagram Stories is there. Because once you get your handle on Instagram Stories, Instagram Stories is a 10 second, or I think it's a 20 second clip. Snapchat's 10 seconds. Um, 20 second clip of your day, is essentially. So like the first story you shoot, it's all day. So it's a sequential of different video clips that you'll go and see that can just tell the story of your day. Um, I think the phone stopped or something. Did it? Yeah. Oh, no, it's still going. We're still going. Yeah, that was just the that was the, Yeah, that was my reminder. Good eye, though, from back there. Back in the room. <laughs> Got my back like a jacket. Um, be consistent. Commit to 15 minutes a day. This is your brand. This is extremely important. Do you understand? It's not going. This stuff is not slowing down at all. There's not a worse game on the planet than ketchup. It just sucks. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Another another Tony Robbins thing. You know, people, you know, I should be doing this, I should be doing that. And they find themselves shooting all over themselves. Uh, it's a must. It's not going anywhere. It is the way that we communicate. But there is one thing I will tell you pertaining to this content we're creating. You don't own Facebook and you probably never will, and I, I never will, or any of these platforms. It's 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 great that you that you put your stake in the ground and you've got some real estate, pun intended on these platforms, because that's where they live. Facebook is a massive, massive environment. YouTube is owned by Google. Twitter, Instagram, etc. These are all very important, but at the same time, you don't own these platforms, right? You may own the content, but you don't own the platforms. These guys went away tomorrow, there's no, con there's no more content, right? So I recommend leveraging these platforms, being active with these platforms, growing these platforms, but get everyone to your website, because that's how you're gonna get them on your email list, that's how you're going to get them to read your blog post. That's how. That's what you own. You own your email list. Constant Contact could go belly up tomorrow. They're probably not going to, but you've got your list. And from your list, you can tell people to do whatever you want. Go to my blog, check out my video on YouTube, check out my Facebook Live here, and you can direct people here. So if you're not building an email database, you need to be building it. Does anybody have an email database that you're not just spamming listings to? No one has an email database in here. Okay, everyone needs to. we got to like... Okay, yeah, you, you absolutely, you, this is an absolute must. So every time you meet somebody, 
Um, does anybody do any networking? You meet new people, get business cards, stuff like that? Okay, download the Evernote app. It's like six bucks a month. It's like recurring, you have to pay six bucks a month. You'll wanna do it. You take a picture of the business card, it pulls up the information based on the email address, it connects them on LinkedIn and sends them a little blurb with, hi, my name's Sebastian. Uh, if you have any questions about social media, it was great meeting you, I'd be more than happy to help you out and it automatically sends that out after I take a picture of it, right? So I achieved three objectives. I'm able to capture the business card, I'm able to connect with somebody on LinkedIn, and I'm able to send them an email with my contact information. And then I go in once a month and upload all my LinkedIn contacts to Constant Contact. So I'm constantly talking to people. And remember, before you hit send on that newsletter, make sure it's valuable. It's not just your listings. Maybe on the bottom right hand corner is like, hey, check out our listings. But I wanted to give you some real meat and potatoes of, of I want to share my weekend at the, C, the South Beach Food and Wine Festival. Or I want to show you, you know, so I went to the Dolphins game and showed the new stadium or, you know, my, my, my pictures that I took or my take on it or, you know, the stadium was leaking. Maybe your firsthand experience on the stadium <laughs> not being done or what, you know, wh whatever the case may be. But there's, there's so many unique different ways that you can, you can, you can repurpose your content and create your content. But. Is everybody picking up what I'm putting down? Yes. Email database. Mm -hmm. All right, 15 minutes a day. Evernote, email database, that's kind of the same thing, okay? And the third question, to keep you up at night, which is, what's my, what's my thing? What's my, how do I, how do I get above that 41, the, how do I make noise and rise above the noise that's in a pool of 41,000 of me? I tell you, once you figure that out, and I believe the first way to be able to do that is come up with a creative content strategy that has your mug on it talking about it going I am the brand I am Sebastian the realtor call we're, call we're, call a banker whoever I'm great grateful for him it's where I hang my hat as far as real estate is concerned but I'm Sebastian the realtor and I'm here to walk you through a whole you know, Facebook live of this brand new and I've got to, actually I want to show, do, do we have, I have like one example I want to show do we have time okay so because of the because of the drone and uh, like the drone and the pictures and all of this and then all the noise. And then I think what really just was the final tipping point was the, um, was the listings on LinkedIn. I'm like, all right, I must do something. I feel, I feel obligated to do something here. So I thought, why don't we create um, the ability to have realtors have like a real estate buzz program. So I have my buddy uh, who worked for, um, I forget, worked for a real estate firm and had just gotten started. So it was a perfect timing. And I said, hey, what do you think about you know me showing up and like, this is when per per Periscope first started. I'm like, what about if I showed up and I live streamed your open house and we'll do a tour and you can walk through and the whole nine. He's like, yeah, that sounds kind of cool. So I'm like, okay, cool. What well, what if I took pictures while I was there and then I'll shoot like some video clips and some B-roll and I'll put together a HD video recap. So we'll do three things at the open house. We're gonna live stream a tour with you walking through it, explaining everything and the neighborhood. Um, we're, I'm going to take some pictures of it, so you've got some 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 photos right off the bat, and then we're also going to put a video recap. We're getting three pieces of content. It took us less than 30 minutes to do. He's like, "This is awesome!" So we did that once, and people actually started jumping on. Where's the property located? We're in Miami. Uh, my, we're in we're in uh, in Miami Shores, uh, close to Morningside. Oh, really? Great! I'm going to swing. People actually started to have conversations and talk about this. So from there, he said, "Well, if this worked, why don't we do this at?" Let's do this. He had a million dollar listing in Weston for a football player, for a Dolphins player. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. It's a co-listing. Uh, we're at a beautiful home, 2704 Boot Lane. It's currently under contract. I'm here with Ben Westy, my partner. I'm William McLean. They didn't plan the purple shirts. All right. Well, this is real estate buzz.
So that let these guys talk about the property too, get a face associated with the content that's there. They're like, I've never seen this. Who's the dude the bow tie in the driveway? My point is that no one's doing this. And like, that's not registering with people. And I'm like, everyone has the ability to do it. And so that's been the consistent message. So these things are not taking place. And I'll show you real quick the, um, the open house where we had the initial idea. So the advantage to working with a team uh, like myself and Ben and, and what we offer really comes in a lot of different ways um, to really successfully market a property of this caliber, of this size in today's market requires the work of more than one person. Uh, we happen to complement each other well. Uh, we both bring different strengths to the tables. And again, I come from Miami-Dade County. Ben is up here in Davie and Broward. So we actually can cover a lot of territory together as well as the strengths that we bring in terms of marketing. This was just a crazy idea with my buddy I went to high school with. I go, hey, what do you edit with on your phone? iMovie. For an iPhone. This was when Periscope first started. Right, we are live with Real Estate Buzz. What's happening, Tim Judge? What's happening, guys, for joining us? What is going on? We're in the beautiful city of Miami Shores. Let me turn this around and talk with you. What's happening? Happy Saturday. How are we doing? Where are you guys coming in from? I am actually at an open house. You're probably thinking, what in the world are you doing at an open house on a Saturday morning in the beautiful Miami Shores? Well, Social Buzz TV has no a bow tie, brand new product. <laughs> you see what I mean? The market is continuing to grow. Imposter! Imposter! <laughs> help create buzz for what they're doing within real estate. You hear me talking a lot about uh, real estate and how realtors are doing it completely wrong. Well, I've been on a mission to find realtors that are doing it completely right. So we're leveraging Periscope because you may not be in Miami, but maybe you know somebody in Miami. Maybe you are in Miami, you're looking for a house, you hopped on Periscope. You never know the connections that I make on a daily basis because of this. What's happening? How are we doing, Shonda? How are we doing? Thanks for joining us, guys. You never know the connections you're going to make. So what I did was I teamed up with my good friend and client, Will McLean. Now, Will's a real estate professional with one Sotheby's. Um, we met up for coffee yesterday. We've been friends for 20 years, uh, and we started talking and conceptualizing this. I needed somebody who got my vision with Real Estate Buzz that was actually with a brand and were actually doing things um, correctly. How do I make connections? I tell you to tweet me so or email me so we can stay in touch, and I make sure that I scope as much as possible. I can't do Q&A right now. Things over it. Things, things over it and introduce and real estate professional with one set of these, uh, Will McC uh, Here we go. Will, what's happening, brother? Good morning, good morning. Thank you guys for joining us. Periscope's coming in here. We got a great use of Periscope, absolutely. So this is a live stream, so it's live, live, got it. But then the archive goes on my YouTube channel forever on Facebook, and I can run ads on it. So um, this is something new. And target just realtors. People are like, hey, I saw your video, I want to do that. why not leverage it and do the open house? If you can't make it to the open house, we're going to bring the open house to you. So what do we got going on here? We got one of the hottest properties on the market right now, Miami Shores. Yeah, well, this one right here, which you'll see as I take you inside, based on location, size, layout, everything that you get in here, it is one of the hottest listings. It looks like one of the best listings. As we'll go inside and see it, follow me this way. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Hey, guys, if you catch the screen, there's going to be all kinds of hearts flying up. Thank you, guys. We appreciate you. So, we really do. So we have an open house scheduled uh, in about an hour from now. It's already getting a ton of RSVP, so it's going to be a great turnout. This property's already gotten a ton of attention. It's only been on the market two weeks. We've had four offers already. Of course, we're trying to do right by our seller and drive that price up as high as possible. But here we are. You know, these days, it's 2015, the 21st century. Well, if you're doing open houses, you've got to be, you've got to mix it up. Uh, the asking price on this house, somebody just asked? 440. 440. It, it's a two bedroom, two bath. It helps when it's staged um, or empty. It's got not a empty, very open floor plan, as you see. You got living area, dining area over here. This was occupied. We told you guys. Yeah. This is actually a, a this is a, a single family um, residence. So this is not an apartment. It's a two two single family residence here in Miami Shores, located right off of Second Avenue. So it's, the value is people jumping in and going asking questions. But you're creating value by answering questions in real time. Well, we'll get them to see this and talk to the realtor. Nobody wants to pick up the phone. <laughs> exactly. All right. So we we're recording here in the kitchen. So again, open kitchen. New appliances. Again, everything in this property flows into each other, which is great. It's perfect for entertainment. You got an outdoor. So you guys get you guys get the point. Yeah. Um, hosting people when cooking when eating. The challenge eating. with getting this product to the market is the realtors that we've come across have all the answers, but they're not doing any live streaming. So there's a disconnect. Does that make sense? Because right. they're like, I got a drone guy. I have a, I have a photographer and I have a video guy. Like, why do we need this? Because this, because that is not this. 
you have to do that because it's great quality, it's cool, I mean, the, the drone stuff, all that technology, awesome. But that one-to-one, -one warm and fuzzy, you know, face-to-face -face combat on really, hey, I'm here to talk to you and engage with you, I don't even know who you are. I'm here to provide content for you that's of value and you don't even know who I am. I believe that's that's tr tremendously valuable to, to, to those that are um, that are tuning in and that are in the market for a house. I know that I want to be, because here's what's happening. If you're not social as a brand, people will begin to judge you, right? People judge you anyway, right? Um, they'll begin to do it as a brand. If they go to your website and they can't watch your videos, they can't read your blog post, they can't, you're not interactive, there's nothing to really to stick out and, and grab your attention, they're just going to judge you and go, well, this person obviously doesn't get it. I want somebody that gets it that I can actually interact with. And, and be able to engage with. So that's yet another reason of making sure that you somehow stand out. And I don't know what that is because it's a personal preference, but you know something that, it, it probably starts with something that you're passionate about. That's gonna be your, your one thing. Well, Sebastian, how do I find out what I'm passionate about? It's real simple. When you wake up in the morning, your feet hit the floor and you go, I wanna do that. Yeah, that. That's what you're passionate about. So figure out how to work that into your brand. So I'm passionate about uh, funding the efforts of the local church stoked about it. I think amazing things are happening. So as my business continues to grow, we're focused on those efforts there, right? And I just invite people to go to a really cool church in Wynwood. It's really cool. Hipsters, tight jeans, cold brew. Like it's a really cool place to go. And I just want to invite people there. Like that's my mission is to be able to say, hey, listen, check it out. Like this guy's crazy, dude. I saw him at a bar last night. He was at church the next morning. I mean, but that's really the consistent message that, that I'm trying to do through my brand. So you've got to find out something that you're passionate about and tie it in. Being socially responsible as a brand. Every time we sell a house here at Sebastian Real Estate, a portion of that goes to homeless. A portion of that goes to the new building development of the church project in Wynwood. A new portion of that goes. And these are things that are, are on the chalkboard as we continue to grow that we can go and do. But making yourself socially responsible and tying yourself into a cause and saying, hey, this whole commission check is not all mine. A portion of it goes towards what we're passionate about. Another angle. Great angle. But legitimately passionate about it. Not let's just right. pick a charity yeah, and yeah. be socially responsible. You're shooting and creating content around that. You're sponsoring their events as an actual brand that have nothing to do with selling a house. But you could meet that one person or that one investor. So, again, we can. I could go on for days. You're probably picking up on that. But... Um, I don't want to overwhelm you too much. I think I gave you a good fire hose of information, but the most important thing that I want you to walk away with is what is my one thing? What is that thing that I can that I can do as a brand to stand out? And then your consistency of creating content. Figure out a video strategy with, with real estate. If you can't figure one out, then, then call me and, and that's what we do. We can help you flush a, a strategy out and execute. So I think that's it. Are we out of time? All right, cool. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Very good. Your business um, card? Sure, I got plenty of those. How long do the videos on Facebook live? What is it, 24 hours? And then